you love the Nintendo 64, then this video is for you. I'm gonna share with you four things about how to make your Nintendo 64 the best 64 that it can be. Let's do it. Thank you so much for tuning into Retro Perfection. We talk about retro games, retro gaming. We talk about modern gaming as well. I've got a bunch of videos on the 3DS. Make sure you go check those out. But uh, thank you so much for being here. Please like and subscribe. I know every YouTuber asks for that, but it really does help the algorithm. If you like the video, it really does help us out on the channel if you subscribe. And we would love for you to come back and watch some more videos. We've got a lot of really good ones planned. Thank you so much for being here. Odds are, if you were in your 20s or 30s and you're watching this, there's a pretty good chance that you grew up with the Nintendo 64. Either that or a GameCube, and I'm a little older, so the Super Nintendo and the NES are the ones that I really grew up with and formed my childhood, but it was my, my later years that I discovered the Nintendo 64. But I know for a lot of you, the Nintendo 64 is your most beloved console because it was your first. The Nintendo 64 is an amazing console full of amazing titles and games and it broke new ground with all sorts of different things like that weird controller uh, that it had that we all sort of love but also sort of hate. It had the first 3D Mario game which was a huge thing in and of itself and paved the way for lots of other Mario games. So we're going to discuss four really cool things that you can do to your Nintendo 64. Some of them expensive, some of them not so expensive. Let's take a look. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a wireless controller, or a modern controller at least, and if you know Nintendo 64 controllers, you know that sometimes that joystick is worn out on your old one, and maybe buying a new inbox controller is not exactly an option because of the cost and the rarity of such an item, but, but that's where Retro Fighters Brawler 64 comes in. These come in wireless and wired configs. And uh, they're very economical at $36 and $50 respectively, and they work great. They look great. They have no lag issues. It feels like a modern controller with modern triggers on it. And while Nintendo may have been pioneering the Nintendo 64 controller design in 1996, it's best left back in the 90s with your arthritis-free kid hands. The second fairly inexpensive thing you can do is to reshell your console. Now, this is a common thing with a lot of consoles, but the Nintendo 64, man, especially looks really, really cool when you do this. This is completely optional. It doesn't affect your gaming experience one bit, but it does allow you to modify your system if you're doing some mods to it and making an HDMI mod or anything like that. It's really easy to do. It's one of the most least expensive items here on the list. You can find some of these awesome translucent shells on Amazon or AliExpress for anywhere between $25 and $75. And I picked this red one up at a retro game show for 50 bucks. I knew I had to have it because it matched my red Retro Fighters controller. And just make sure you have a retro bit screwdriver or a bit set before you proceed. And don't lose any of the tiny springs for the dust cover doors where the cartridge goes. It's actually a very simple job. It only took me about 45 minutes to do. It made this console stand out really, really well. And there's really only one thing that's the most expensive here that you need to get, and that is an EverDrive. 64. You've probably heard of retro flash carts before. You've probably heard of uh, flash carts and Game Boys and different things like that that let you play any ROM that you provided, provided you have a big enough SD card. But the hardest part, honestly, is not necessarily finding one of these available. They're readily available. Uh, they're not cheap. You're going to fork over at least 100 bucks for it. But again, you get to play the entire library of 64 games. Uh, and the hardest thing about that is finding a great place to download the ROMs. And I can't tell you where to go for that, but a quick Google search is going to be able to give you the answer. Once you have your games, you can download the firmware for the EverDrive, load on your games, and you're off to playing GoldenEye with all your friends, just like you're at a sleepover back in 1997. Now, the fourth and final thing is probably something that you don't already have, uh, but it's safe to say, if you're watching this channel, you might actually have one, and that is a CRT, a cathode ray tube television set, an old TV, uh, and any one will do. You don't have to have the broadcast monitors that people are asking 1500 bucks for. You just have to find your grandma's old TV with component inputs, or composite inputs, rather, 
and be able to plug those right in. If you can find a set with S video on it, and I'm going to have a whole video, a whole long video about how I think S video is the best format for you to use for retro gaming in 2023. But if you can find a set that has S video on it, the plug looks like this, then the cables for the Nintendo 64 are very easy to find. They're the same ones actually that are used in the Super Nintendo, the SNES, and they have the same plug. And so you can use them interchangeably actually. And you really don't have to spend a lot of money. Now you can spend some money. You can find some really good high quality cables. But if you're just looking for a good quality retro gaming experience on an old style TV, S-Video is the way to go. Now, one thing we're not going to talk about or cover in this video is a modded console. Uh, modding your console for HDMI. There are those available, but they're very expensive. The lead time is usually pretty long. And so I'm not recommending that to you right now. What I'm recommending is that you find your old 64, you make some changes, you buy an EverDrive, and you get S-Video cables and a good little CRT and you're off to the races. Optionally, you can use something like the RetroTINK 2X, and that would allow you to play on a modern flat screen, and uh, it would do it relatively inexpensively, but at the time of this video, those are not readily available either. And so, hard to get your hands on some of those transcoders and some of those line doublers like the FrameMeister and some of those others. And while we're not going to go into depth in that in this video, really, it's just going to be great for you to find an old TV with S-Video or with composite get you a $10 S-Video cable for your Nintendo 64, and you are ready to go. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, if you love the Nintendo 64 as much as I do, please chime in. Tell me your favorite game. Tell me your favorite system. Send me a photo of your favorite setup. Um, I would love to see it.